thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Joachim from the from University of Applied Sciences in Germany, Bonn. And this is joint work with uh, Heiko Wegmüller from the Koblenz University of Applied Sciences. Sciences. Both cities located in the lovely Rhine area. Um, I'm here to tell you something about partially squares with formative constructs and binary target variable. First, I give you um, an overview about the topics we discussed here in this uh, talk. Um, I start with the challenge, what was the problem at hand we had to solve. Then um, I give you some background information about the research on meaning of work. That is where the problem comes from. Uh, we got some data we uh, used to fit a model. And then a short discussion, why did we use PLS and not structural equation modeling, such as covariance structure analysis? Um, some aspects about model fitting, and finally the results. Um, that's all well. Let's come to the challenge. We have the problem that we had uh, uh, many variables, high model complexity, about more than 70 latent variables. We had formatively measured constructs, that none of uh, them was uh, ref reflectively measured. Everything was formatively measured, and we had a binary target variable. Of course, we have analysis approaches for complex models. We have it for formatively measurements, and we have it for binary targets. But the challenge lies in the combination of the three. To my knowledge, this hasn't been done very often before, um, and that's wh what I want to present, how we did it. Um, where does the problem come from? It comes from the field of human resource resource management, and there's one uh, subfield of that which is called the meaning of work. It, has to, um, it researches how uh, and when a worker, an employee, uh, finds meaning in the, in the job he does. And in empirical research, we have two streams. On the one hand, we have experiments on the, on the left-hand side. Um, experiments are very good. Uh, to analyze causal effects, but the generalization is at least questionable and often not clear. On the other hand, you have surveys um, done by questionnaires, and um, most of the surveys are not um, representative. They have small sample sizes, and due to that, the causal causality is often not clear. Furthermore, we discuss meaning of work. There's theory which says meaning of work is the moderator. We have theory which says theory of work is the mediator. The true role of it isn't clear, and, and it hasn't been tested in the common model due to the small sample size. And intention to quit um, hasn't been used as a, as a, binary, as a target variable. Normally, um, research has uh, motivational variables as a target. So um, there are some drawbacks in the, in the research so far. On the other hand, we have representative data. There's a German trade union federation, the Deutsche Gewerkschaftsbund, which collects data on an annual basis. They do an annual questionnaire. Um, they ask several thousands of um, employees about working conditions. And this data set is representative. In 2014, the data we used, uh, we had uh, more than 4,000 uh, responses. And this data set includes measurements for meaning of work and um, intention to quit. So, it seems that this data can be used for research. But the thing is, the measurements, the questionnaire use, are all formative, and they haven't been assessed for reliability or validity or objectivity aspects. So the measurements haven't been, haven't been developed by scientific me uh, means. And furthermore, item non-response is a big problem. Um, in our case, the item non-response uh, reduced the sample size to about 2,300. So, some problems at hand. Not everything can be solved in one step, but uh, it seems that this data set can help to br uh, bridge the gap between um, the experiments and the surveys in empirical research of meaning of work. What we have to do if we want to um, find out if the data set can be used for analysis we need an approach for the validation of affirmative constructs. Normally, you uh, validate nomological validity. Um, I don't present here how we did it. Um, we need an approach to deal with the item non-response, imputation methods or uh, following up calls maybe in the data collection process. This is not dis uh, discussed here as well. But what I discuss here is we need a model to test with the data and, of course, um, a means of um, an, an statistical method to analyze the data. The model we used, or well, that one, we derived it from theory. 
On the right-hand side, you have um, the binary target in 10 grid. On the left-hand side, you have several antecedents. I will um, come to them in detail on the next slide. First, let me show you the role of meaning of work. We have theory which says that meaning of work has a moderating role on work contact characteristics, such as um, uh, work, de work demands, physical demands, emotional demands of the work, overtime, pay satisfaction. Those are all um, work contact characteristics, and meaning of work has a moderating role on them. And at, in addition, meaning of work has a mediating role for motivational characteristics and social characteristics. So that was the common model. One of the first times we have both uh, meaning of work as a moderator and as a mediator in one common model. And let's have a look on the variables. The personal characteristics um, consists of variables such as gender, age, tenure, graduation, training qualification, altogether eight variables. We have job opportunities. Job opportunities, um, measure, we measure that, them by the open positions by industrial sector. That, that gave us another 36 variables. Um, work context characteristics consists of working time, um, pay satisfaction, um, physical demands, emotional demands of the work. 11 variables and another 11 moderators. Motivational characteristics, job autonomy, and um, development opportunities. Social characteristics, which support uh, an employee gets from his organization, his co-workers, or his supervisors. Altogether, if you sum it up, more than 70. Um, most of, uh, many of them latent, um, all of them formatively measured. Now, that's the background. That's what we have, a complex model. Now let's discuss why we did use PLS and not covariance structure analysis. We had the three challenges. We had um, the model complexity. For complex models, PLS is more recommended. I think it has to do with uh, the numbers of parameters to be estimated. If you do a covariance structure analysis for, say, about 100 indicators, you have to uh, estimate a whole covariance matrix that is uh, 100 times 100 divided by two, so about 5,000 parameters. Um, with PLS, there are not so many parameters to be estimated. Um, formative measurements, if the vast majority of your latent constructs is formatively measured, then it is recommended to use um, the PLS approach and not the covariance structure approach. And binary target, structural equation modeling can handle that, and PLS as well. There has been some uh, work from Francesca Petrarca. She applied uh, a PLS, uh, she combined PLS with uh, logistic regression in her PhD thesis in 2014, and everything has been implemented in the PLS PM package uh, from uh, Mr. Sanchez and co authors. So, PLS can handle the three challenges, and that was the main reason why we did use PLS. Uh, well, there was another reason it worked. Um, there's one thing we have to keep in mind, because PLS has, has an, an assumption. PLS assumes that it's possible to calculate scores for the latent variables. That is, to calculate explicit numbers for your latent variables. This is different to what covariance structure analysis does. Covariance structure analysis analyzes the covariance matrix, that is, the covariances of the indicators. If you calculate scores from your, indica uh, from your indicators, if you calculate scores for the latent variables um, and you have measurement errors in your, in your indicators, the measurement errors will be included in the scores of the latent variables. This is not so the case with covariance structure analysis. When you analyze covariances, it is assumed that the measurement errors will be um, plotted out. So we have to keep in mind that for hypothesis testing, and that is what we are doing here, we have measurement errors included in the in the latent variable scores, and we cannot assess the size of the measurement errors. That, that could be a problem. We have two more advantages, which are not uh, relevant here. PLS is applicable for low sample sizes. That's not our problem here. And PLS has no distributional assumptions. Um, but as we want to do hypothesis testing, we need to calculate p-values. And if you want to calculate p-values, um, you need a distribution to do that. So we need some distributions here. But anyway, let's have a look how to fit the model. The model fitting process consists of two steps. First, we fit the model with all the latent variables, but without mediators and moderators. 
This is illustrated here. Um, and then we fitted a second model, including the mediators and moderators. This is a standard approach to uh, handle mediators and moderators, recommended, for example, by Baron Kenny in 1986 or in, in the book of PLS analysis from Hare and co-authors. Um, and a mediating effect, for example, is present when you have significant effect from, from the uh, variables to the mediators, from the mediators to uh, the target variable, and the direct effect from the variable to the target reduced. If both holds, then we have um, mediating effects. And for moderating effects, a similar um, argumentation is true. So we had two models, one with and one without mediators and moderators. And how did we apply the PLS PM package? We used the package for the first step to calculate latent scores for the, for the variables. In the second step, step, we extracted the scores for the latent variables and applied a logistic regression. Normally, the PLSPM package um, does simply ordinary least squares regressions for the relations between the latent variable scores. But we extract, extracted the scores and applied a logistic regression. And therefore, the normal third step, which um, the PLS algorithm uh, um, includes, the calculation of the loadings of the indicators, we did not use here. Okay, and finally, that gave us the following results. First, we see the picture without the moderators and mediators. Um, on the, it was quite a, a challenge to uh, display more than 70 variables in one slide, so I decided only to display the variables which are significant at least at the 10% level. So everything you don't see here hasn't been significant at the 10% level. Um, we have personal characteristics such as tenure age would have a negative effect on uh, intention to quit. That means the older you are, the lower your intention to quit. Or the pay satisfaction, for example, has a strong significant effect on intention to quit. The higher your pay satisfaction is, the lower is your intention to quit. The physical demands, the higher the physical demands are, the lower is your intention to quit. And on the left hand side, you see the motivational characteristics and social characteristics. Development opportunities have a negative effect on intention to quit. There was no effect from job autonomy on intention to quit, and meaning of work has a strong negative effect on intention to quit. The more the work is meaningful to you, the lower is your intention to quit. Now we add the moderators and mediators. The first thing we observed, that there's no moderating effect present. We didn't find any moderating significant effect. The only effects we find were mediating effects. But first, let me look on the right hand, right hand side. You see uh, one uh, bubble has disappeared. Uh, the reason was the 10% uh, p-value rule. Um, the p-value changed from 8 or 9% to 11%, and that was the reason why the bubble is missing now. So the, the change is, there is a change in the model, but not very severe change. Um, on the left hand side, we see um, mediating and moderating uh, mediating effects. We see mediating effects from development opportunities and job autonomy on meaning of work and then significant effect again on intention to quit. And the direct effect from development opportunity on intention to quit has reduced. So we see indeed a me um, mediating effect of meaning of work on motivational characteristics. We also see an effect from the social characteristics on meaning of uh, work, but the direct effect from the social characteristics to intention to quit did not reduce, so this is not a mediating effect. Now to sum it up, it is possible to combine the PLS uh, algorithm with the logistic regression to analyze binary target data variables. Um, we have meaning of work as a mediating effect on motivational characteristics, but there was no moderating effect presence. Okay, that's it. Short overview of over our project. Thank you, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, can you please repeat that? <laughs> Uh, 
Um, the, que the question was if that approach could be generalized to uh, other models, uh, such as what was it, um, random forests? No? Yeah. yeah, just as an example, yeah. Um, let me think. Yeah, I think so, because you calculate scores for the latent variable, then you have manifest, uh, you have um, um, exact values you can put into other algorithms. I think it could work, yeah.